of the circus. For Jerry of the Circus. Golly, it's a big enough building, isn't it, Pat? Mm, looks like a prosperous bank, too. Well, I, I'm holding my thumbs for good luck. <laughs> I'll hold mine, too. Come on, Jerry, let's go in. Gee, you're welcome. This is a big place. Who we asked for? I don't know. Guess we better find out. I'll try it this window. I beg your pardon, but could you tell me who I should see about a key to a safety deposit box? Uh, certainly, miss. Mr. Burnside is in charge. You'll find him in that window just this side of the safety deposit vault. Well, thank you very much. Still holding your thumbs, Pat? <laughs> I certainly am. Let's see. I guess this is the window. You look nice enough. He'll hear you. Are you Mr. Burnside? Yes. Is there anything I can do for you? There sure is. Just a minute, Jerry. You see, it's kind of a long story, Mr. Burnside. Have you got the key, Jerry? Yeah, uh, here it is. This key belonged to this boy's father. I see. Well, after a lot of inquiries, we thought it was made by the Brunner Lock Company, and they sent us a list of banks that used to use this pattern. Oh, yes. Yes, we used to use it ourselves. But we've long since changed to a more satisfactory pattern. I'm sure this key hasn't been used for a good many years. At least that's what we think, and we thought perhaps now, you could... Now, let me see. It's possible if the box hasn't been opened for some time, a new lock hasn't been put on. Mm -hmm. We still have a few left of the old type. Uh, what is your name, son? Jerry Dugan. My father's name was Tim Dugan. Well, if you'll excuse me just a minute while I look through this book. It records all the renters of deposit boxes. Of course. D. Now, let me see. Please let this Dempster, be the bank. Mr. Donnelly. Please, please. Downing. Dugan. Oh, yes, yes. Here we are. Timothy J. Dugan. Oh, oh, Jerry. Now, let me see. This box was rented about ten years ago. Hmm. No payments have been made in the past several years. And no answers to any of the letters of inquiry sent to Mr. Dugan. Yes, Dad was too broke to pay. Well, young man, you've come in good time. This box would eventually be turned over to the state. Golly, I'm sure glad we found it. So am I. May we see what's in it? You see, Jerry's father... Well, he died a little while ago. And... Oh, I'm sorry, my boy. So I guess the box would belong to him. Of course, he'd have to pay the past rent. I guess I can help him out if it isn't too much. I'm afraid it isn't as easy as that, young lady. Well, what do you mean? Well, you see, there are state laws. When the renter of one of the safety deposit boxes dies, the box is turned over to the courts. But it belonged to my dad. Well, the courts open the box and then dispose of the contents according to the laws of the state. Of course, with a will... Dad didn't leave a will. He, he didn't have anything. At least, uh, I didn't think he did until we found this was a key to a safety deposit box. But, Mr. Burnside, there must be some way for Jerry to... Well, well, it does seem as if an only son would have some rights. Well, there is a way, but it's quite a job. You'd have to have a lawyer. Well, what would I have to do? Well, you couldn't do very much of anything, son, seeing as you're underage. Your lawyer would have to get the permission of your guardian. Then he'd appeal to the superior court to allow you to open the box. Jiminy, lawyers are kind of expensive, too. I'd like to help you out, son, but I guess there's only one thing to do in this case. Well, Mr. Burnside, do you think we could find a lawyer who wouldn't be too expensive? Well, now there's a young friend of mine has an office upstairs in this building. 
He hasn't been in business long, but... Then uh, you wouldn't cost so much. Oh, <laughs> well, I was just going to suggest that, after all, anything important enough to be kept in a safety deposit vault is likely to be worth something. Oh, I see. And if it belongs to Jerry, being the only member of the family, he could pay the lawyer from whatever's in the box. Oh, you're a smart little woman. I know most lawyers wouldn't bother with such a thing, and perhaps Grayson won't. I can't say for him, but but you might try. Gee, that's swell. Let's try, Pat. Uh-huh. You'll find him on the third floor, Richard Grayson, room 306. Tell him I sent you, and then he'll know it's all right. Oh, thanks awfully, Mr. Burnside. We'll go right up now. Good luck, miss. Hope he can help you. Thank Bye, you. and thanks. The elevators are right through this passage here. Oh, thank you. Jiminy Willikers. We find a box, and now we can't open it. Well, it certainly is lucky finding the right bank right off. Yeah, and I'm grateful, too, but... Oh, golly, seems as if we get so far, and then something new turns up. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we ever will find out. Oh, oh, there's an elevator now. You better get in, Jerry. All right. Third floor, please. Seventh floor. Tenth. Third floor out. Here we are. There, Richard Grayson, attorney. Come on, Jerry. Just a minute. What's wrong now? Well, hold your thumbs again. <laughs> you think it brought us luck the first time, huh? Well, I don't know, but no use taking chances. Oh, I guess you're right, Jerry. Okay, I'll hold tight. Are you ready? Yep. Good morning. How do you do? Is, is Mr. Grayson in? What name shall I say? Well, he wouldn't know who we are. You better just say that Mr. Burnside from the bank downstairs sent us up. Just a minute, please. Holly, I hope this is our lucky day. Well, it has been so far. <laughs> yeah. If you'll just step this way, please. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Grayson. Hello. Won't you be seated? Thank you. I uh, understand Mr. Burnside sent you up. Yes, he did. You see, we're strangers in town. Yeah, we're with the Randall Brothers Circus. Just got in this morning. My, that's exciting. It's nice to meet show folks. Well, it's like this, Mr. Grayson. Jerry... Oh, yes, uh, this is Jerry Dugan. How do you do, Jerry? And I'm Patsy. You know, the star area. I'm delighted to meet you, Miss Patsy. Well, Jerry Dugan joined the circus just this season. His father was an old friend of the owner, Mr. Randall. As a matter of fact, Jerry's dad was an old performer himself, and all the timers knew and liked him. It's pretty nice to have a dad you're proud of, isn't it, Jerry? You bet it is. My dad... Well, you see, he died just before I joined up with the circus. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's a long story, Mr. Grayson. But this is the thing we've come to see you about. Jerry's dad had a safety deposit box that Jerry didn't know anything about. Yeah, I just carried this old key ring around, not realizing that the little key might belong to something. Then finally, we traced that box to the bank downstairs. You don't say. Well, now, Mr. Burnside says that as long as Mr. Dugan isn't living, the box has to be turned over to the courts. He's right. It does. But Jerry's the only child. It does seem he should be allowed to open the box. The law tries to protect people, Miss Patsy. But sometimes it can manage to cause an awful lot of red tape. Red tape? <laughs> Jerry, that means often the law is so complex that you have to go a long way around to reach a destination. Sign a lot of papers and, oh, go to a lot of trouble that seems kind of foolish to the outsider. Like coming to you and, and all you'll have to do before I can see what Dad left in that box, huh? Exactly. Mr. Grayson hasn't agreed to do it for us yet, Jerry. What did you two have in mind? Well, Mr. Burnside said if we were taken to the Superior Court... They might give consent for Jerry to open the box. That's true. But I'd have to have a lawyer. And so you came to me. Yeah. Could you do it? I mean, would you? Pretty anxious to see what your dad left in that box, aren't you, son? I sure am. And you shall. I'll be glad to take the case. Oh, that's fine of you, Mr. Grayson. Not at all. I'm glad to do it. To be perfectly frank, I'm just starting out in my practice. <laughs> and I've got more time on my hands than I like to admit. I guess I can afford to take a risk in a case like this. Oh, gee, you're swell. You won't be sorry either. I'm sure I won't. Now I'll have to get some information from you. Here's the key to the box. Do you need that? No, only the number and all the information about it. When it was rented and so forth. I can get that from Mr. Burnside. Well, then what? Then I'll have to have the signature of Jerry's guardian. Guardian? I haven't got a guardian. Well, then your closest living relative. Oh, my Uncle Dan. Of course. If you'll just write his name and address here on this paper. I don't suppose he lives in Jackson City. No, does that matter? Oh, not at all. I'll get a wire off to him and have him airmail his notarized signature back to me with the permission to go ahead. Oh, he'll do that, all right. There, can you read that? Daniel Dugan. Sure I can, it's good and clear. Oh, in a hospital? Yeah, he had a pretty bad accident, but he's getting well now. Very well, I'll get this right off. Ought to have an airmail back sometime tomorrow if he intends to start it right away. Oh, that's swell. 
see, what time is it? Ten minutes of eleven. Well, is that all right, Patsy? Oh, of course it is. You see, Patsy's breaking in a new number this afternoon. It's a humdinger, too. I'll oh, bet it is. Wish I could see it. Gee, that's a good idea. Why don't you? Go to the circus in the middle of the day? Well, you did say you didn't have so much work to do. Here, here, young man. You needn't rub it in. Oh, gee, I, I didn't mean it As that way. As a matter way. of fact, I think it's a pretty good idea. Anyhow, I like a circus best when the kids are there. Yeah, most of them do come in the afternoon. Well, I'll be very glad to arrange for a ticket for you, Mr. Grayson. Oh, no, that's mighty nice of you, Miss Patsy. I guess it's a pretty big honor to be a guest of the circus. It sure is. I'll accept with pleasure. Fine. What time does it go on? 2.30. But if you come early, you can see the side shows and everything. You bet I will. I haven't seen a show in a long time. It's about time I saw a good show again. I kind of miss all the excitement of show business. Well, you mean you were... I was brought up in the theater. I haven't been around show folks for a long time. But I I guess it kind of gets in your blood. I'll say it does. Uh, where, what'd your folks do? Mother was a dancer. And Dad was one of the finest Shakespearean actors of his time. Oh, that's exciting. But how'd you happen to, well, to... Become uh, a lawyer? Yes, that's it. Well, you see, Dad had a crazy notion that I had to have an education. So when I got to college... Gee, did he... you go to college? Oh, of course, Jerry. <laughs> Now, how do you think Mr. Grayson could be a lawyer without going to college? Well, golly, guess I didn't think. Well, after Dad put me through law school out west, he, he helped me to open this office here. Oh, it's awfully nice. You bet it is. That's one reason I'm so anxious to succeed. So someday I can pay Dad back for all he did for me. Well, is your dad still acting? No, not so much nowadays. But he plays now and then during a good season. The rest of the time, he coaches. Coaches? Yeah, uh, Jerry, uh, that means he helps others, teaches them how to play their parts. Yep, Dad's been coaching our most famous stars in New York on and off for many years now. Gee, that's well. Hmm. I wonder if I ever saw him. You know, when I was little, Mother used to take me to shows now and then. You might have seen him. His was a big name in the theater once. John B. Grayson. Oh, yes, I've often heard that name. You see now, I, I'll be looking forward to your show this afternoon. Gee, I'll say. All right, folks. I'll get this wire right off and get in touch with you as soon as I get an answer from your uncle. I'll leave a ticket for you at the box office. Thank you, Miss Patsy. Thank you, Mr. Grayson, for... Well, for... Oh. <laughs> I haven't done anything yet. Well, then, thank you for all you're going to do. 